Let's go ahead. Thank you very much. So welcome everybody to, to, to my presentation. Uh, first time, actually, I'm in .NET Conf, so let's see how it goes. Hopefully they invite me in future years if I don't break up anything here. Uh, my name is Edgar Sanchez. I, um, I actually live and work in Ecuador in South America. So, uh, so forgive a little bit my English and my accent, you know. Uh, you, you can see there my, uh, my, uh, my Twitter handle also. And if you've got any questions or do a follow up of what we are going to talk about today, uh, please contact me. I'm happy to talk about all this stuff. So, so, so we'll see you around. But let's, let's, get, let's get ahead. So, uh, I've got just uh, three, three, three main points to talk about here. First of all, I will discuss what exactly is what we want to achieve uh, with our presentation. Then I'll discuss uh, of the prerequisites and the general setup we have to do to get uh, to get Power BI reports working inside uh, Blaze or Pages. Uh, then we will break up that thing in uh, in uh, just uh, four steps, as you can see there. Uh, never mind about the text there. We'll do that uh, in code, like so. So fingers crossed. And uh, then we'll discuss general next steps about this. So. First of all, this is what we want to achieve. We want to have a site, and I'm intentionally using the, the no frills, the standard site that comes from the template, uh, from the Blazor template we have available on, on Visual Studio 2022. And uh, I will just add to, uh, to that uh, simple template as few stuff as possible to make this work. And on the right, you can see uh, already an um, a Power BI uh, uh, report working live there. I'm talking about working live. Let me just show you this working. So let me see, just to check out everything is fine. Of course, we'll be, we'll be checking out um, several of the files in this project here, but uh, for the time being, for the time being, let me go ahead and get here, I guess. So this is our site. And uh, this is all report working. We are remember we are connecting live here for reasons I'm going to explain first of all to Azure Active Directory and then find a, a second step to Power BI. And as uh, you can see, we have the, the Power BI report working live here. Okay, so that's that's what we want to achieve, right? Then, um so, so uh, in principle, this is simple enough. We've got a website uh, uh, to, be, to be clear. Uh, we are using, this site is created using Blazor, but actually you can do any, any HTML uh, generation technology, okay? Uh, then once the site, or one that, once the pages are showing in our browser, will be showing a report inside the browser from the Power BI site, all right? Um, so we're actually using two different cloud uh, services if you want. Uh, first of all, the one with our, uh, with our site proper and then the Power BI site, okay? That's, that's what we, got, what we are going to do. So what do we need to do this? First of all, we need, of course, a uh, uh, Power BI Pro account meaning a Power BI portal service working for us, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is we need, uh, we do need an Azure subscription. Uh, why? Because uh, actually what we are using to ask for the Power BI services is a service principal. And a service principal is an entity, is a concept that comes from Azure, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll discuss a little bit more about this uh, in just a few minutes. And finally, of course, you're going to need .NET 6 because it's with .NET 6 that we are going to create the Blazor site um, where we are going to embed the reports. Uh, aside of that, you can do this with Visual Studio 20, uh, 2022 or you can use Visual Studio Code, right? So uh, Let's uh, let's uh, uh, let's explain a little bit more what what I mean with the stuff we are needing. So let me see here. Okay, this is the Azure portal. You can see it here, and I'm going to go to Azure Active Directory, right? So the first thing we have to create is an app registration here. 
I've already done this, of course. And uh, uh, specifically, the one I'm going to use is this one, Displacer Power BI Embedding, all right? You can create as many as these entities as you need or want. Uh, actually, they are free, so you can create a, a dozen or a hundred of them even. So no cost around it yet, okay? And uh, all, all what we need this for is because this gives name or the, this is where uh, a uh, service principal entity lives, right? That's the first thing we need. We just go here to app registrations, create a new registration, and give it any name, right? All right. And uh, well, getting in here, actually, the two things I'm going to need from this uh, from this uh, app registration is the this ID, which is the actually the ID of my whole Azure subscription, and then the ID of my uh, of this uh, of this uh, app, right? There's two strings is all i'm going to need okay next thing uh well usually uh you want to restrict the access to this uh service entity with one of two things in production it's uh, recommended to use a certificate right uh when you are doing development uh you can very well use a secret and a secret is nothing more to just a string that you say inside here, right? I'm going to go this way, just because it's a little bit easier to show it, nothing else. And that's it for the app registration. Furthermore, and we'll see why in a minute, uh, you want to create a group, right? In this case, I've, I've created a group by the name of Power BI Apps, okay? And as, uh, as you would expect, inside this Power BI uh, Apps group, our uh, app registration is a member of this group, right? That's, that's all we need on the Azure side. Now, let's go to the Power BI side. Okay, this is a pretty, uh, pretty standard Power BI site. Nothing interesting about it in principle. We've got there a couple of, uh, a couple of workspaces. And if we check, this is the one I'm going to use. We've got there just a pretty standard uh, Power BI report. Okay, so so far nothing interesting. Now, in order in order for our app registration from here to access or to be able to ask for services from here, the first thing we need to to do is to go to settings and open the admin portal. Okay. And then you go way down here. Let me check where it is. Down, 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 a lot of stuff here. And here we are, developer settings, all right? So the one thing you need enable, to enable is this one. Allow service principles to use Power BI, okay? This is, this is something that you want to enable. And by default, it's disabled, okay? This, this setting is the one that will allow us, uh, will allow the, uh, the, uh, the app registration that I mentioned before to call services from this site. All right, that's, that's the first thing. Okay, uh, now, furthermore, furthermore um, in order to, to specifically have access to the report and data we have in this workspace, we need to go to the access permissions. Remember now, I am I, I am in, I'm in the specific workspace. Go to the access and give the group. Remember, group Power BI apps permissions here, right? Strictly speaking, all we need is uh, viewer permissions, okay? Just to show reports. If you want to 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 give more 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 capacities, for example, the capacity to modify a report, then then you indeed need to give a contributor permission or something, right? So this is the second setup at uh, Power BI level. Remember, one one is for the whole site, one is for the whole site, right? And the other one is workspace by workspace, right? 
And that's that's pretty much our setup, of, of course, aside of installing Visual Studio 2022. Okay, let me go back to my uh, slides. Now, things are a little bit more complicated than, than in my original slide. Uh, actually, actually, in order to be able to access to Power BI services, what we want is for Azure Active Directory uh, to, to get an Azure Active Directory token, all right? This token will have permissions to call Power BI services here. So first of all, we need to do this, right? A, use the app registration to ask for a token so Power BI services will answer all demands, right? Okay. Uh, after having that token, the next thing we're going to need is uh, uh, met metadata about our specific report, okay? Information like the ID of the report and things like that, okay? All of this can and should be done on the back end for security reasons. And once we have the metadata of the report, we send that metadata to our site, right? It is only then that Blazor gets involved because only then using Blazor, we are going to use that metadata to ask the Power BI site to send us the uh, report, the proper, okay? That's just the last step there. In this last step, it's, it's the only point where we have a direct communication between our site and the and Power BI services and it will, it will only be able to ask for information, to ask, excuse me, for the report that we already had got access through the backend, right? Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm saying here. So um, uh, let, let's, let's check this out on Incode, right? So let me go to uh, Power BI, to our site, okay? As I said uh, a few minutes ago, we, we have uh, just the regular template there, right? So uh, if if I go to the site, by the way, let me get there. Let me show you this first page, get AD token. And this get, get AD token option, this first one, all is giving me back is this long, long string. And this, uh, token is the one that I'm going to use to ask for services to the Power BI portal. All right. So this is the first step we need. If I go back to my slides, this token is the one I get on uh, on this part of our, of our slide. All right. Let's see how we do that. Um, if we go back to the code and if I go to the page. The first page is this one, uh, get AD token racer. So a regular, a regular uh, laser page. And all we've got here, as you can see, we're we are just showing this PV, PVI API token here. Okay. And in order to get that token, we are just calling these web services, this web service, excuse me, API Azure AD token. And we're doing nothing else. So uh, all the interesting stuff is happening actually in this web service. I've got this web service, this web service, sorry, in the server project, the controllers, and uh, here it is our controller. And the first uh, thing here is this is just a regular web API controller. Nothing fancy, nothing interesting about it, right? Uh, where it starts to get interesting, this is actually the, the, the method, the operation we are using, or, or we are invoking from Blazor. We are getting the tenant ID and the client ID. Remember, these are the two, uh, the two, um, get back here. The two guys here from here, where you are, locations, is your beginning heading. These two guys, the client ID and the tenant ID. I'm just getting them from uh, application uh, PP settings JSON. So are exactly these guys, right? Uh, uh, then 
in order to ask for a token, we, ha we have to send this URL with the tenant ID, right? Oh, and by the way, here it is the client secret, you know, the password. And then what we do is to create um, an object that represents the app registration or service principal, if you want, okay? Oh, by the way, where do I get the, all this, uh, th these classes and methods from? We get all those guys from this namespace, Microsoft Identity Client, and uh, certainly we've got here the Microsoft Identity Client uh, package. So that's something you need to get to this first step to get the token, right? So then we are called, we are saying we want a token for this service of the many, many services you've got in Microsoft 365 or in uh, Azure. Each one of them has got a, a specific URL, a specific ID if you want. So this, this one is telling, okay, what I want is a token that uh, uh, allows me to ask for Power BI services, right? So I just create an, an array with this, uh, with this uh, ID, with this URL, and I'm calling this function. This function is the one that makes the magic, acquire token for client. So this gets me back a token, this token, this guy here. Well, it gets me back a full object. From that full object, for my needs, all I want is this string, access token. And that's my first step. That's my first step, okay, with that token. Now, second step. The second step is going to be, um, uh, let's call it a little bit faster, or, or it is my side, it's here. The second step is going to be, let's get the metadata for the report. Here it is. So the metadata is basically the report ID, a URL, which is a, 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 a URL that's crafted for my specific session. And then finally, a token that only works for my session and for this specific report, all right? This is done so that we, we have a kind of airtight security around accessing services and accessing the reports. Okay, so how do we get this information? Let's go a little bit faster. Uh, basically, what we do, where is this page? It's here, uh, get report invoking for Razor. So this is just showing that information, nothing interesting around it. And uh, we are calling this other service, API Power BI. And uh, we are getting back an object embedded report view model. Okay, that's a simple record actually. We've got it here. So this is the information we're getting, the metadata we need. And actually we don't need the name. All we need is the ID, the embedded URL and the token. Remember this is information specific for my session and for this uh, specific report, right? Okay, so let's go and see the service. And the service is this one, okay, again, uh, plain uh, web APR controller, nothing interesting around it. Mm, the first part is exactly the same as a minute ago. Uh, the new stuff is here. Once we got, once we've got the token, we create a token credentials object, first of all, and uh, now we want to connect to uh, these, the services of Power, uh, the Power BI services, excuse me. And with that information, we create a Power BI client. Where do we get all these classes and all these methods? From this other package, the Microsoft.PowerBI Power API package. This is the second and last package you need for this to work, all right? And um, now we need the uh, ID for the workspace. Now we are talking in Power BI terms and the ID for the report. Where do I get this information from? 
we go back to my report. Where are you? You are here. If I get into this report, you can see that this report belongs to this group. This is the ID of the workspace. And this is the ID of this report in particular. Okay? So that's the information I'm getting here. And when I call this get reports in group uh, method, I'm getting back all the metadata for the report. Okay? Then when I get that metadata, I further request for a token. This token, this is the long token I've got here. And remember, once again, this token only works for this report and for the uh, nothing uh, and for this session, nothing more. Okay, we I ask for the information and then I get it back. And that's all for the second uh, part. And so far, everything is pretty much standard. Now comes the interesting thing: How do I show this in uh, in uh, in uh, how do I show the report? Okay, I need the this last part. Okay, the report showing here. So for do that, let me back here one last time, and then things get interesting. Uh, that's here, right? Uh, first of all, that report will show inside this div element. The name could be anything. Don't worry about that. Okay, the name could be anything, all right? And uh, all we do is this. First of all, we get this uh, JavaScript file. We're going to check it that in a minute. Then we are going the metadata that we, we just uh, saw a minute ago. So we're getting that metadata, okay? Um, so I'm loading this JavaScript file. First of all, then I'm getting the metadata. That's it. And now all I do is to call this method, passing the uh, information about the name of the div, this div here, right? And then this metadata. And this method does all the magic, right? So, so uh, the last thing we want to check is how this guy does this job, the embed.js file. And that's the only JavaScript uh, data we've got here. So that guy is here. Uh, here it is. All right. So um, all we do here is um, we've got the function. We were just calling from C sharp. And uh, notice how easily we can from C sharp in Blazor call a JavaScript function, all right? We get the, uh, we get the uh, DOM element from a report. Then we just create this object, this configuration object. Uh, it's an object that Power BI needs in order to, to know what report to get with what permissions. And of course, we have to send the token. And finally, all we do is call this JavaScript function, right? Now, where do I get this Power BI function? This is JavaScript. Um, you get it from here. You, got, you get this Power BI client from, in my case, from a CDN. Uh, this Power BI client need, needs, uh, needs jQuery. It uses internally jQuery. So that's why I'm also asking for it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Actually, if you, if, if, you, if you think about it, this is a pretty generic function uh, in the sense that it can present any, any Power BI report in any container, okay? Nothing specific here. So this can be reused in any number of places for any number of reports. And uh, as I said before, the only thing that you have to do is to call that JavaScript function from uh, C-sharp from uh, Blazor. 
with the container and the metadata. And the metadata came from this, uh, came from this Power BI function. And that pretty much does the trick. Um, uh, the, the, uh, as I said when I started, the only different thing from the general documentation that you found uh, find around uh, is uh, the way that I'm using JavaScript to load files and to invoke uh, JavaScript functions from Blazor. Okay, that's that's kind of the interesting thing of my presentation, and that was that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to show you. So uh, I I don't know if you got uh, any additional questions. Uh, yeah, hey, there you are. Hey, hey. Jamie, hey have you? Oh, good. <laughs> No worries. We had a couple of things. So Jamie, uh, actually, let me one second. Let me refresh the dashboard here, and we can kind of show them up. So, go ahead. Yeah, um, got a lot of praise. Uh, people are enjoying uh, the Power BI talk uh, and Blazor talk, Edgar. So this oh. is amazing. Um, amazing combo of technologies. Great session. Great. Right. Thank you very much. And I will read this one because Jamie and I talked about it. I could probably do it a little bit better. It's in Spanish. Uh -huh. And it uh -huh. says, Edgar Sanchez, siguiendo tu presentación, que alegría y orgullo para Ecuador tener como este presentador en esta edición. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Yeah. So I'll translate uh -huh. quick for everybody uh -huh. who is just like, it's like, thank you, Edgar, for uh, what a pride and just happiness to have a presenter like you in this session. So... This is what I love about that right? Yeah, it's global, so you're getting to representation from all over the world. I love yeah. It. Yeah. So I have a bunch of questions, but we're right on time because I really mm -hmm. appreciate that. Where is your source going to be posted at? Let's 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 start with that. Yeah, uh, I haven't stayed published in the GitHub, but I'm going to do that just today. So please pay attention to my uh, to my Twitter handle. Remember, Perfect. it's just at Edgar Sanchez. And I publish there the, the GitHub address as soon as I, I put the call up. Great. And also for everybody, our, it literally, that is my weekend task is to take all of the slides, all of the links to all the videos and publish it out to our GitHub repo. And then we will tweet it uh, on the .NET um, Twitter uh, account. So that way we already can go look at it. So that's that's my weekend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all the slides will be available. <laughs> so yeah, Thanks, it's, yeah it, it will be good. But again, Edgar, thank you so much for taking the time to present. Uh, no, thank today. you for the opportunity and see you around.